Hey kiddies, it's Triple Feature Tuesday once again, and this week we look at young Brits impersonating old Brits in genre movies. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything. That's right, in the past uh, couple decades we've had a bunch of young British actors, and I'm going to use the term British very loosely and explain as we go along, impersonating older British actors, because we've just had a lot of prequel type of stuff, which has been fun. And by fun, I mean the movies have ranged from really brilliant reinterpretations of the source material to the worst things that have ever happened, and I sort of hate myself for even bringing them up, but I'm going to talk about them for, you know, the bare minimum amount of time. So this triple feature is going to go in order of fidelity to the original actors. So we're going to start with the actors who were the least like the originators of the parts and end with the people that had just dead-on impersonations of their actors. So our menu is going to include X-Men First Class, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, and Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. I think people, like, forget how much of a breath of fresh air X-Men First Class really was, because you had X-Men 3, The Last Stand, which is the second worst superhero movie I've ever seen. I think Spider-Man 3 is still the absolute worst. Or maybe it's Blade 3. No, I think it's Spider-Man 3 because that hurt more. But X-Men 3 was really, 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 really terrible. And that was followed by X-Men Origins Wolverine, which, while not as soul-crushingly bad as X-Men 3, was atrocious and terrible. So, I, for one, was very excited that we were getting just a completely different type of X-Men movie, and I had high hopes that this was going to, you know, act as a sort of relaunch for the whole franchise, but, you know, Brian Singer and Days of Future Past ruined that idea. But we're here to focus on the positive. And there's a lot of positive to be had with this one, where we have James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender playing Charles Xavier and uh, Eric Lencher, parts originated by Sir Patrick Stewart and Sir Ian McKellen, respectively. And they are just as delightful as their uh, older counterparts, even though they're not really doing anything. In interviews, both uh, McAvoy and uh, Fassbender basically said, you know, they were taking maybe cues from uh, Sir Ian and Sir Patrick, but really just tried to make the parts their own. This is seen much more with uh, Michael Fassbender than, say, uh, James McAvoy. I think more than any other pairing of young actor and old actor in this triple feature, McAvoy and Fassbender had some, uh, some of the tougher jobs because McAvoy... Uh, Scottish, so he's doing an English accent to match up with Patrick Stewart, whereas Michael Fassbender is Irish by way of Germany, and so he's doing not necessarily the English accent that Ian McKellen was talking with, but going with a much more non-specific European accent, uh, kind of similar to Christopher Lambert in uh, the first Highlander movie. But the one that probably falls under the radar is Rose Byrne, uh, playing Moira McTaggart, you might forget, and rightfully so, that Moira McTaggart actually does make an appearance in X-Men 3, played by the English actress Olivia Williams, probably still most famous for being uh, Bruce Willis's widow in uh, The Sixth Sense. Uh, Rose Byrne is Australian. She is playing Moira McTaggart as an American. Olivia Williams played Moira McTaggart as an English geneticist. Both of them got it wrong since Moira is actually Scottish. But hey, it's the movies, so we don't really care as much. As a uh, little kind of honorable mention, while not really doing the impersonation uh, pre-Blue Fur, Nicholas Holt really does sound a lot more like Kelsey Grammer the minute he gets all blue and furry, which uh, I'm pretty sure was on purpose and was a delight for me. Next up, we have The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. And this was just... Fascinating, because Martin Freeman plays Bilbo Baggins, the part originated in uh, the Peter Jackson films, at least, by uh, Sir Ian Holm. A lot of knights in this triple feature, a lot of members of the Order of the British Empire. Ian Holm, just always delightful, except for the parts where he's supposed to be menacing, in which he's very menacing. Uh, alien. Anyway, in the Hobbit films, Martin Freeman plays the younger version of Bilbo Baggins, and this was just a revelation, because... 
not necessarily in terms of acting skill, because I've loved Martin Freeman since Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and, you know, continued on through Sherlock, because, oh my god, Sherlock. But I didn't even realize that there was an Ian Holm impression to do. It starts the impression from the not necessarily stiff, but definitely rigid uh, English everyman, and turns that into the, the Martin Freeman hero character that we've grown to love over... Uh, the seasons with Sherlock, and it is a highlight for uh, the series as a whole. With uh, the three of these movies, I'm going with the uh, the film that seems to epitomize most of the uh, connection from the older character to the younger character, and in this one, I think he's most like Ian Holm in terms of, it's, it's just that Bilbo is a very, at, very peaceful at home hobbit with just only uh, a little wanderlust, whereas in the second two films he's, you know, very much inside the adventure. It's fun watching Martin uh, turn the Ian Holm, Bilbo Baggins character into somebody that can do all of these incredible things uh, throughout the series. Finally, we have Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. Now, here's the thing. The prequels just suck. They get worse every time I watch them. There are very discreet parts that I enjoy, namely Darth Maul. But the only consistently good thing throughout all of them is Ewan McGregor playing Obi young Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's sort of astonishing to watch. In addition to the makeup making Ewan McGregor look more and more like Alec, Alec McGuinness as the uh, series progresses, Ewan really has the Alec McGuinness voice down pretty much from the first movie all the way through the third and it just gets better and better and he adds like little touches uh, uh, more touches as it goes along and keep in mind Ewan McGregor is Scottish so he is uh in addition to just trying to impersonate this guy he's uh altering his voice to a greater degree it is an impressive accomplishment in and of itself let alone he is entertaining in a series of movies that is almost uh, specifically trying to make you hate something that you've loved for the better part of the 20 years that you were on the planet Earth. <sighs> but he's wonderful. It's like the one brilliant piece of casting that they had in that, for, in the, uh, the, you know, the prequel trilogy, and while I hate just about everything else about it, I can never bring myself to hate him. Or Darth Maul, or Mace Windu, to a lesser extent. And Ian McDermott as Palpatine. But Ian McDermott was great as Palpatine in the original movies, so he's, you know, great throughout all of them. But uh, we live in hope that the new trilogy is going to be better, where we have, you know, the then younger actors playing the older versions of themselves, because that's the way it should be. Like, while I think all of these movies are good to varying degrees, but Revenge of the Sith being very small. Uh, I much prefer sequels as opposed to prequels, because uh, we want the story to go forward. We started at one point. We don't need to see everything that came before that point, because we know where it's going to end up. Let's see where we're going in the future, which is much more exciting. So, uh, if you feel the need to look at movies where, you know, we're going back to the beginnings of things, and you have a penchant for, uh, younger British actors impersonating, uh, prob hopefully some of their idols, because, I mean, Ian Holm, Alec McGuinness, Alec Guinness. Yeah, totally just realized saying Alec Guinness the whole time. Sir Ian, Sir Ian, Sir Patrick, and Sir Alec, uh, you should watch these. X-Men, First Class, The Hobbit, uh, An Unexpected Journey, and Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, and, uh, I will see you guys next week.